gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons, we are going to be reviewing Libertalia Winds of Galecrest. This is a new edition of the original Libertalia that was released in 2012. It's been given the Stonemaier Games treatment and updated. We are about to get another game played in just a few minutes. So it is designed by Paolo Mori with art by Lamaro Smith. I already said it. It's published by Stonemaier Games, but I'll reiterate it just once again, just to, you know, keep that nice sequence that I normally do. But on that note, Julie's now going to tell you more about the game itself. So first of all, I'd like to thank Stonemaier Games for sending us this review copies. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we'd like to remind our viewers that this, though this is a review copy and we are appreciative, our opinions will remain our own. As always. Yes. So this is a competitive game. Oh no! Ah, uh, yes. Sometimes we need to play competitive games. <laughs> Playing quite a few of them. Uh, this is for one to six players. It uh, plays in about 45 to 60 minutes and is intended for ages 14 and above. And actually says on the box, no to zero to three. <laughs> I All think right. it's the little tokens. Yes. So what will you be doing in Libertalia? Well, each player will have the same set of six cards that will be in their hand. So when you start... You're all gonna have these same crew members that you can be playing to the island. You'll be dispatching crew members to the island through different days. On your first voyage, there are four days, second voyage, five, the third voyage, six days. So crew members go to the island and then they will be bringing back loot if they are still on the island by the time it is dusk. And then they will return to the space in front of you, which will be your ship area. Then at the end of the voyage or every night, they may have some special abilities that trigger. If not, you're just kind of hanging out and you might need to discard them depending on things that happen. Or, you know, having someone that only has daytime abilities that will trigger when you first arrive at the island, well, you might be able to discard one of them instead of another player that has some better ability. So that's why you really have everyone on your ship. Also, there's this reputation track. So as you move up and down the reputation track, you will be getting potentially some doubloons if you're gonna go off it, but it also gives you advantage in terms of where you will place your character, well, your crew members in the island and in the order that they will be triggering. Did I miss anything at all, Julie? I think you got it covered. All right, just don't forget that the loot also has some effects when you acquire it as well. So on that note, we're going to grab our drinks, grab our best friend. We're gonna take it to the table one more time. One more time, who's gonna win? Probably you. Now I'm gonna take a quick look at the gameplay in a two-player game of Libertalia Winds of Galecrest. So the setup is gonna be largely the same as you can see here. The bottom part of the board is just cut off due to the setup with the camera. Uh, you can see that when you're playing a two-player game, you still put out the three pieces of loot as it's stated in the bef before each voyage section. Now when you're two players, in this case, we're gonna imagine that green and purple are the players. They go in the middle of the reputation track, with the other colors just being used as placeholders. Now, you will also then take the midshipman tile and you will place this over the second and third slots in a two player game. So, how things will change now are that when you're going to be placing cards, if you have a card that is of a higher value than as you can see, the 20.5, just to make sure that it's always at that spot, you will end up on the other side of the midshipman. And if you have a card that is a lower value, you'll end up here. Now, how this really changes the game is what's going to occur when it comes to picking out your loot, because you're going to have a lot, this player here is gonna have a lot more control over what the other player is going to get because you will go into the dust phase first, you'll get to say pick your loot, and then what will then happen is if a character is directly to the left of the midshipman, their opponent then gets to this, remove one of the loot tokens. So for example, let's say you don't want them to have the hook or you don't want them to get the barrel, you get to then remove it and they are stuck taking whatever's left. Meaning that strategically when you're playing on this side, you're gonna want to take that into account. So if you know that you want to, for example, not necessarily get any loot. Well, that's great. 
You can play as a cabin boy, which is a good strategy if, for example, you're on day three and you're not going for the treasure chest because you won't have to take any loot. So meaning, so let's just imagine that we're here. So the brawler would take the treasure chest and you don't necessarily want the relic, which doesn't cause a problem because they discard the saber, forcing you to take the relic. Well, guess what? You don't gain any loot tokens. So you just have to really take into account how the midshipman is going to affect play and how your opponent's going to be able to potentially discard the second best loot that's there. Now, if, for example, you had someone that was higher, so let's just take a look, you know, thief. Well, instead of the cabin boy, doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about the midshipman at this point because you're both on the opposite side. So it's only really gonna affect anything when you're playing with those characters that have a ranking below 20. So there you have it, that's just a nice little overview as to how things work with regard to the midshipmen. Now keep it right here, as Julie and I are gonna be coming back at you with our review of the two player version of Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest. So Julie, Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest, we're gonna stress this, the two-player game. What did you think of this game? Well, as always, I find with uh, Stonemaier games, the production value is is pretty amazing. I mean, oh, I love the art. I love the way everything looks. The fact that the board is dual-sided with the different, uh, you know, the harder, oh, not harder, I'd say the more unfriendly rules on one side. I think it's definitely more in your face. Let's call yeah. it that. In your face, abilities, not rules. Abilities definitely seems a lot better from the loot tokens on one side, the more friendly ones on the other side, and then uh, something that we haven't quite gone to yet, but I really think is gonna be probably the best way to play the game, is you do have some tiles that you can mix up to randomize what's on this board. So you can have a mix of the friendly and the unfriendly abilities. So I think that's probably going to give you the best balance and make for a more interesting experience. There's also be some way for you to customize the game however you want it. If there's some abilities that you just hate on one side, well, you can swap them out. Uh, yeah, so as you said, I mean, uh, the art is is pretty amazing. I really like, uh, you know, these tokens. And then there's, you know, there's a, a treasure chest where, you know, you keep track of your doubloons. Yeah. I like that each deck, even though they're identical, has a different airship on the back which I just think is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, as always, like I said, production value is pretty amazing. Um, so to get back to the different sides, um, as Jason said, we played two players only. Uh, we weren't able to, uh, to play the game at any of the higher player counts, which you can go up to six players. So that's another advantage I would say to this yeah. game uh, is the fact that you can play it to six players. And a lot of the actions that you're going to be taking is simultaneous and the higher the player counts are going to get, I think the faster you're going to be be playing because you're going to have to try to take into account what everyone's playing. At, at the same point in time, you really just need to focus on your game and remember the pitfalls that could potentially happen to you. So you just got to make the best decision for yourself as all players have an identical hand of cards, at least in the first round. And even then, everyone's still going to draw an identical set but depending on the different crew members that are played, it's going to change up. And once you get into the second day or so, it's going to be really hard to remember what each person has in their hand and how they're playing. Uh, so yeah, so um, of the two sides, I think I definitely prefer the uh, the other side, uh, which is a little less uh, in your face. I mean, if you've been if you're new to the channel, you haven't heard me say this before. If you're not new to the channel, you've heard me say. I uh, I used to hate competitive games. I really didn't want to play them. I went in um, backwards, to not use bad words, uh, <laughs> into the, the games. Um, as we've been playing more and more games, especially I find a lot of competitive Stonemaier games have come to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, Even I, the more complex ones. Like She loves tapestry. She's kicked my butt a few times with that one. So uh, I've come to realize that I do like uh, competitive games. However, I don't love the in-your-face aspects of retaliation or uh, take that. So, I'm going to disagree with you. No, you can't disagree with what I and, don't like. No, no, I'm not saying about you don't like. I'm going to disagree for saying that this game is take that. 
and has a lot of in-your-face elements. I think that the game is just very much heads up, so automatically you're triggering effects on one player. That being said, it does really become a heads-up battle in this point, and because everyone's the same set of cards, it does mean that there is really one optimal way to like sort of play the game, depending on what the other players are playing. And if you play the most optimally, you're going to win the game. If you can mathematically figure out the sequence, then guess what? You're always going to win an adds up game because your hands are essentially identical. Now, the randomization of pulling cards out of the deck will definitely mean that it'll be harder to calculate and there'll be some r random variables. But at the same point in time, you have perfect information in this game. And if you're able to figure out what's the best way to handle every situation, you will automatically win. And that's just what's gonna happen in a two-player game. Now, there could be a little bit of a flex with regards to the midshipman. I'll lift this up so you can see. I know we showed it in the gameplay overview, but the midshipman lets you discard a loot token. So that could change things up depending on where someone ends up. But that being said, once again, you have perfect information. So if you can take that into account, well, you're gonna be off to the races. So I'm gonna say that um, there are, we played a few games. Um, there are some games that I didn't hate, um, but I'd have to say the last game that we played was really uh, just the way the cards came out and the, there was a, the fact that we played this side of the, the board. Um, there's a lot more retaliation possible or a lot more take that in the sense that, you know, you made me discard a lot of my characters. You made me lose uh, this, lose that. You made me pick up uh, loot that made me discard uh, characters. You made me, you know, so basically I, I would kept taking that and taking that and taking that. So it, for me, wasn't much fun at two players, and I'm going to be very honest, and to, to, I told Jason I'm never playing this game one-on-one -on -one against him again. I This is just not for me at two players. That being said, I'm interested to see how this plays at four or five or six. Like, I'm interested actually in the five or six. Four would already offer a different dynamic. I'm not sure that three would offer that much of a different dynamic, um, but I'm interested to try this at a game night. I will play it again and keep an open mind from um, a higher player count perspective. Um, it doesn't happen very often that I don't um, at least have uh, more than a 50% enjoy um, <laughs> the Stonemeyer games, even if they are competitive. Um, but this time, I just... Well, one of the reasons for that is that Libertalia is an older game. This game came out in 2012, so it does show its age just a little bit. It has been given the Stonemeyer games treatment, refreshed, updated, and looks a lot better than the dour looking pirate game that it was. And I'm just talking about the art, it was really dark. And in this one, you're now Sky Pirate, so it fits a lot more with the theme and the world that Stonemeyer game has been cultivated. So I love everything about what we're doing in this game. I love the mechanics, I like taking our you know, the crew members, to sending them to the island, getting the loot, moving the reputation, having to make the tough decisions. But I'm gonna agree with Julie. I think this loses something at two players. And the original Libertalia was not designed as a two player game. So the two player and the solo experience are completely new. I have not tried the Otoma. I'm gonna guess I think I'll enjoy the Otoma more. I just don't think that I like the way the midshipman works. and. Like I was talking about in terms of perfect information, especially on the last game, I was able to read the way you were going to play fairly well. And that really let me get off to a strong start and getting my wind nymph down, which gave me a lot of the balloons, being able to like avoid your brute, using my brute to get rid of your wind nymph. There's just a few things that really started to set everything up in my favor. And then the fact that you know, a lot of the time, just what we were drawing, it was strategically, do I want to play on this side of the board? But, oh wait, Jason's probably going to do this, so he's going to play here, or Julie's going to do this and like be ahead of me because of the reputation back the way it was, which was in our favor. So often it was like, we're on this side or on this side, just because of strategy. And that really affects the game because then if you're here, your opponent, 
gets to discard some good loot and force you into some bad situations. And that's one thing that I did on the last game very much to my advantage, which affected Julie negatively, but it doesn't mean I was loving the game. It became quite clear around day two that I was running away with it just because everything was kind of coming up my way. And when Julie did have some good moves, I happened to just have the right counters in place. And that's what you're gonna get in this two player game experience. Something that's not gonna happen when you're filling up the island, the loot's not gonna necessarily be discarded and it's gonna be much more strategic in terms of what you're doing. Especially depending on the side of the board, you mean like on this one, you don't necessarily wanna draw the sabers. You might want other people to draw the sabers or you're gonna try to draw them with a lower rank character that doesn't have any abilities because you have to discard them and you want to have the right character to score points from them as well. So it's just going to have a lot of higher level strategy and everyone's going to be going for different things based on what they think is their best option to win. So all those different strategies are going to coalesce together in such a way that it's not going to be the same type of experience that we had at two players. But Production-wise, art-wise, storage, like setup time, everything about this game is great. I love this package. I definitely think that this is gonna be a game that we're gonna hang on to for a long time. I can see it being a regular at game nights because it's really quick to set up. It's just drop the board, hand out over in your decks, you're ready to go. And because a lot of the actions are simultaneous, as long as you trust everyone at the table, I mean, this is a pirate game, maybe they're gonna try to sneak a few doubloons. Well, they don't do that you're going to be fairly well off in terms of just playing the game rather quickly. Uh, so why don't you give it your score? So I'm going to score this purely based on the two-player game. And while the game gets a pass, it's playable. I don't love it. I didn't greatly enjoy my experience, but the production value almost got it to that grade that I think is a solid spot for a game. But I think that the two players need a little bit more work to make it a little less in your face, but I think that's maybe just what this is. I'm gonna give it a six and a half. I think it's a solid experience. I think if you like that heads up, smashing your heads together, uh, strategy type game. But when I'm looking at the colorful cards, the theme, and the way everything just kind of comes out and comes together, I gotta feel like just these two things, like the way you're going at each other and what you're looking at on the board, even when you're on the stormy side, just a little bit opposites of what the experience I want is at the table. So um, I would have a different rank, uh, sorry, a different score if I was to score this purely on um, my appreciation of the gameplay. Um, I, I'm going to, as I always do, let this um, be scored based on what I think as well this game is meant to be and what it's supposed to be and who it is intended for. Uh, I know for a fact there are some people that would enjoy this a lot more than me. I, I can think of a couple people at our, um, at our different uh, gaming groups that would love the competitive nature of this game and the fact that, as you said, you have perfect information. I've had discussions with some of these people who absolutely love that and I'm like, yeah, that's not what I love about a game. Um, so for me, to, you know, <laughs> to cut to the chase, um, this is a six. Um, it passes uh, because of the production value and all the things uh, that I mentioned before. If it was purely based on my enjoyment of the two player game, it would get a five. Yep. Um, but I think that's a little harsh. I just, as I said, this is not my type of game, especially not at two players. I, you know what, if we play it at four, six, four or six or five players, if we play at one of those upper player counts, I think we should do just a short, you know, what do we think of it at the higher player count? I think we can definitely get a quick review done uh, of this game once we get it at higher player counts once we get it played because we enjoyed the episode of Tabletop watching them play this game and it looked a lot of fun. You had a lot of sniping going back and forth. Sometimes it was a bad round, another times it was a bad round for someone else and it just seemed to be a lot more balanced overall. Also with a lot of different people, you're trying to play your best game but still trying to maybe screw over the person that might be winning but at the same point in time, you still gotta play your best game and you're not gonna be just like taking a saber to screw someone over with in this one, when you're head to head, it really is that like, well, I can maybe not do as well, but as long as they get boxed out of points, I'm still ahead. 
So on that note, it's time to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when we have new content for you. And take a look down below in the video description, you'll find links to all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you'd like to see pictures of Julie and I playing the Retalia Winds of Gale Crest, there'll be plenty of those on the on all of our feeds. Also down there is a link to multizone.ca, a great Canadian game store. Click that link, you get 10% off your next purchase, and it's a great way to support the channel as a portion of that purchase is returned to us. So if you're looking for the Retalia, make sure to check them out. Now popping up in front of us are going to be links to some of our previously released videos. In front of me will be our most recent release. And as we are talking about Stonemaier games and competitive games, I think our favorite one should go there, which would be Red Rising. Really fits in that same amount of time to play and ease of setting it up. Your favorite. I don't think it's mine. It was your highest ranked one. It even beat out Wingspan. Okay. She's like, I need to play it again. <laughs> okay, so on that note, it's time to grab our drinks. Grab our best friend. We're going to keep playing games. Keep playing games. Hopefully this one will get back to the table soon.